Yeah, I mean, good morning. You've reported the numbers really well. I mean, the practical answer is that as far as our investors are concerned, we're doing exactly what, what they want us to do on the day job, which is measuring and underwriting risk, and that's produced a good return. The sort of practicalities of UK accounting um, require us to report an unrealised non-cash loss on the investment line. That recovers, actually, over the next three reporting periods. So it feels a bit odd, doesn't it? Interest rates are rising. Isn't that good for you investing? your assets? The answer is yes, it is. But accounting practices require certain actions. So again, investors understand that. So it is genuinely a really good result. Um, but again, let me, let me just um, uh, reiterate the point about the outlook from here, because there are a lot of numbers here that look incredibly strong, like, for example, the gross written premium number up 17.4% and the net earned premium up 14.4%. A lot of that, I suspect, reflecting the nervousness that we're seeing around NAPCAT and other higher claims. Is this just a moment in time, though, where you hit those kind of numbers, or do you think that's sustainable over a longer time frame? So, so two things. Number one, we do genuinely believe the performance that we're reporting is sustainable. Number two, this is one of those periods in time when customers, businesses, dare I say it, governments need us. You know, whether you look at financial crises, whether you look at the complication of systemic risk as COVID revealed, or dare I see it desperately, the Russian invasion of the Ukraine. We need to stand up at these points in time and help businesses to regain the confidence they need to make some brave decisions. That's why we're growing because we think we're in just the position to be able to do that. You've laid it on a plate for me for my next question. Good morning to you, sir. Are you going to insure ships carrying Russian oil and gas? So the answer to that question really lies with, with the politicians. You know, when we were asked, and we were asked a few weeks ago, could we insure uh, ships that were carrying Ukrainian food and Ukrainian fertiliser, the answer was, yes, of course we can. You know, if you want to create a passage to transfer those goods, then we'll find a way to insure it. And we are. We're insuring that today. If governments decide that transportation of Russian food and Russian fertiliser needs to be realised, then we'll do that as well. We are completely apolitical. Our job is to understand what the politicians do and don't want us to do. And actually, dare I say it, to try and serve the world and try and serve economies. It's, it's a particularly difficult time, isn't it? John, that doesn't strike me as a brave decision you just ask other people to make. Um, surely you can't be apolitical at a time when we've got a country waging the most vicious war in Europe since 1945. Isn't it now the time for Lloyds, to, regardless of what some of the rivals are and aren't doing internationally, to say we will not finance the Russian war machine? We're not looking to finance the Russian war machine at all. Our actual direct insurance interests, dare I say it, in Russia are tiny. They're a fraction of 1% of our premium income. So it is not what we do for a living. What we do want to do is to ensure that there is food, uh, that there is requirements and the, and the needs of customers elsewhere in the world are met. It's not, our, it's not our job to set those requirements. So where governments around the world in the UK or the European Union or the US have set sanctions, our job is to ensure that those sanctions are seen through. And that's exactly what we do do. So we do respond to the political environment. What do people want and need us to do? At the moment, that is to ensure that the sanctions that are being imposed against Russia are being adhered to. And that's exactly what we are doing.